So what a treat today, Brother Jeff. Today we're going to be looking at God's four disastrous acts of judgment. The sword, famine, pestilence, and wild beast. And what's really special, Brother Jeff, is we're not going to be looking at what man has to say or what man has to think about this. We're going to be looking into God's Word to allow interpretations to belong to God. And what's really nice, Brother Jeff, is this language is not just in a few places in the Bible, but it's everywhere. That's right, Chris. We're going to take a ride from the Song of Moses all the way to Revelation. We're going to find out what these disastrous acts of judgment are. We're going to find out the reason for these judgments, which is disobedience. So if you're going to be disobedient, no matter where you are in history, Chris, the four acts of judgment are coming your way. Revelation 6 says, When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades also followed close behind him. There were given power of a fourth of the earth to kill by the sword, by famine, plague, by wild beasts of the earth. Well, there we see that language, Brother Jeff. Uh, sword, famine, plague, and wild beasts of the earth. Let's look at uh, Ezekiel 14 and see what God calls uh, sword, famine, plague, and wild beasts. For thus says the Lord God, my four disastrous acts of judgment, sword, famine, wild beast, pestilence. Instead of me or you or any man saying what he thinks about seal number four or he thinks about sword, famine, wild beast, or pestilence, why don't we just adopt God's language and call these things what he calls them, his four disastrous acts of judgment. So let's look at this same language in the Song of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 22, he says, For a fire is kindled in his anger and shall burn to the lowest hell. It shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of mountains. He will heap disasters on them. He will spend his arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger, devoured by pestilence and bitter destruction. He will also send against them the teeth of the beasts with the poison serpents of the dust. The sword shall destroy outside. There shall be terror within for the young man and virgin, the nursing child, with the man of gray hairs. Wow, no one gets away from this one, Chris. Isaiah got it right when he says, I have declared the end from the beginning. From ancient times, things that hadn't even been done yet are going to come to pass in Revelation. And here it is. He's got the sword. He's got the peace. He's got the pestilence. He's got hunger. All from the beginning of the Song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32. Amen. His four disastrous acts of judgment. Amen. And now, Brother Jeff, at Ezekiel 14, we get a whole chapter dealing with God's four disastrous acts of judgment. Right, and he even gives us some of the reasons why these uh, acts are in here. And let's take a look and see if the four disastrous acts of judgment is also included in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 14 and verse 12 says, And the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, when a land sins against me by acting faithlessly, and I stretch out my hand against it, and break its supply of bread, and send famine upon it, and cut off from it man and beast, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would deliver but their own lives by their righteousness, declares the Lord. Right, and here we see sins and faithlessness are some of the reasons. And uh, what does he do? He cuts off the supply of bread. We've got the black horse of famine. Brother Jeff, what is verse 14 talking about when it mentions Noah, Daniel, and Job? Well, here you have these three great men of faith, Noah and the ark, Daniel and the lion's den, and Job with all the afflictions that he had to go through. And uh, they could only deliver their own selves by their own righteousness. Continuing at verse 15, he says, If he causes the wild beasts to pass through the land, and they ravage it, and it be made desolate, so that no one may pass through because of the beasts, even if these three men were in it, as he lives, declares the Lord, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters. They alone would be delivered, but the land would be desolate. That's right. And here we see in 15 another disastrous act of judgment, wild beast. And these three men are not going to be able to save their sons or daughters. Wow. And continuing at verse 17, he says, Or if he brings a sword upon that land, and says, Let a sword pass through the land, 
and he cuts off from it man and beast, though these three men were in it, as he lives, declares the Lord, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they alone would be delivered. Right, again, these three men only, and another disastrous act of judgment. It's the sword with the red horse. And continuing at verse 19, Or if he sends a pestilence into that land, and pours out his wrath upon it with blood, to cut off from it man and beast, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as he lives, declares the Lord, they would deliver neither sons nor daughter. They alone would deliver but their own lives by their righteousness. Ezekiel's got them all. It's got the famine in 13. It's got the wild beast in 15, the sword in 17. It's got the pestilence in verse 19, and verse 21 sums it up. He says, my four disastrous acts of judgment, the sword, famine, wild beast, and pestilence. It's all there. (laughs) Amen, amen. And that's what he says in verse 21. For thus says the Lord God, how much more when he sends upon Jerusalem his four disastrous acts of judgment, sword, famine, wild beast, and pestilence, again, to cut off from it man and beast. Now here he does a little shift, Brother Jeff. He says, but behold, some survivors will be left in it, sons and daughters who will be brought out. Behold, when they come to you, you will see their ways and their deeds. You will be consoled for the disasters that he has brought upon Jerusalem, for all that he has brought upon it. They will console you when you see their ways and their deeds. And you shall know that he has not done without cause all that he has done in it, declares the Lord. Amen. So, Brother Jeff, what is it talking about uh, in these final few scriptures where it says some survivors and, and somehow will be consoled when they see their ways and their deeds? Well, it says here in 22, But behold, some survivors will be left, and sons and daughters who will be brought out, behold, when they come out to you. So these people are going to get, they're going to be survivors. They're going to make it through here. And it says here that uh, when we see their ways and their deeds, we'll understand what has happened here. And the only way that they could get out was the same way Noah, Daniel, and Job did. It was by their own righteousness. And the people that didn't make it, well, there was a cause for that too. Mm, Amen. So, Brother Jeff, we see this similar language to it with Jesus' words. He says it Matthew 24, 7 and 8. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are a beginning of sorrows. Right, these are uh, mirroring the uh, the seals here, and we've got the sword with the red horse that brings war. We've got the black horse that brings famine or no bread, and we've got the uh, pale horse, which is the pestilence. So he's... Uh, declaring the end from the beginning, and uh, it's him that's talking here in Matthew, and it's him that's talking in Revelation. And here, Jesus, of course, leaves out the wild beasts, but he's including God's four disastrous acts of judgment. Now, is this the end, Brother Jeff? This is not the end. This is the beginning of sorrows. Amen. It's going to seem like the end to most of the world who doesn't have the scriptures, but as, as you just said, as Christ said, this is just the beginning. Ezekiel 5. Thus says the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the center of the nations with countries all around her, and she has rebelled against my rules by doing wickedness more than the nations against my statutes, more than the countries all around her. For they have rejected my rules and have not walked in my statutes. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I, even I, am against you, and I will execute judgments in the midst and in, in your sight of the nations i because of all the abominations with you what i have never yet done and like of which i will never do again therefore fathers shall eat their sons in your midst and sons shall eat their fathers and i will execute judgments on you and any of you who survive i will scatter to all the winds wow And so here we really start to get into some of the reasons why God sends these four disastrous acts of judgment. And Ezekiel 5 stacks it here. He says, rebel against my rules, wickedness more than the nations. Uh, They're rebelling against his statutes more than the countries all around her. They've rejected her rules, not walked in her ways. Uh, All of her abominations 
And so we get a lot of God's reasons why he's uh, executing these judgments. Not without cause, Chris. Mm. Moving on to 11. Therefore, as I live, declares the Lord God, surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with your detestable things and with all of your abominations, therefore I will withdraw. My eye will not spare and I will have no pity. A third part of you shall die of pestilence and be consumed with famine. And in your midst a third part shall fall by the sword and all around you. And a third part I will scatter to the winds and I will unsheathe the sword after them. And then they shall my anger spend itself and I will vent my fury upon them and satisfy myself. And they shall know that I am the Lord anger that I have spoken in my jealousy and when I spend all my fury upon them moreover I will make you a desolation and a object of reproach among the nations all around you and in the sight of all who pass by you shall be a reproach and a taunt and a warning and a horror to the nations all around you when I execute judgments on you in anger and fury and with furious rebukes. I am the Lord, I have spoken. When I send against them the terrible errors of famine, which shall be for the destruction, which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and I will cut off your supply of bread. So I will send against you famine and wild beast, and they will bereave you. Pestilence and blood shall pass through you, and I will bring the sword against you, I, the Lord, have spoken. Wow. So again, we see this strong language of sword, famine, disease, wild beasts, God's four disastrous acts of judgment. Uh, Brother Jeff, this doesn't sound like God's talking about the world or the nations. This sounds like he's talking to his people. How does this uh, connect with judgment starting with the house of God? Well, he says right here in Ezekiel 5, this is Jerusalem, the center of the nations. And he says, they have rebelled against my rules, wickedness more than the nations around him. They're against my statutes, and they have rejected my rules and not walked in my statutes. These are the people that claim they worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they don't honor the way of his statutes. They don't honor his rules. They have defiled his sanctuaries. They do detestable things and abomination. This includes not only Jerusalem, but anyone that declares themselves to be a believer of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know that the conditions, Brother Jeff, of the seven congregations seem to be very reminiscent of these scriptures we're reading here. Should Christians in the future expect to receive the first couple seals, seal two, three, and four, these four disastrous acts of judgment, as a result of the condition of the seven congregations in Revelation? Absolutely. These are for everyone that does not want to follow the rules or the statutes, that want to keep continuing to do abominations and defile the sanctuary. This is for everyone. Amen, Brother Jeff. Judgment starts with the house of God. Amen. And moving on, Brother Jeff, at Jeremiah 14, we get a whole other chapter on God's four disastrous acts of judgment. In verse 1, he says, The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought, Judah mourns, and her gates languish. Her people lament on the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem goes up. Her nobles send their servants for water. They come to the cisterns, they find no water. They return with with their vessels empty. They are ashamed and confounded and cover their heads because of the ground that is dismayed, since there is no rain on the land. The farmers are abashed, they cover their heads. Even the doe in the field forsakes her newborn fawn because there is no grass. We see that same language in trumpet number one. The wild donkeys stand on, stand on the bare heights. They pant for air like jackals. Their eyes fail because there is no vegetation. Though our inequities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against you. Thus says the Lord concerning this people, they have loved to wander, thus they have not restrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their inequity and punish their sins. 
the Lord said to Jeremiah, Do not pray for the welfare of this people. Though they fast, I will not hear their cry. And though they offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, he will not accept them, but he will consume them by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. Jeremiah says that Judah mourns and God has caused a drought. He says they send the servants for water. There's no water. The ground is dismayed. There's no rain on the land. There's no grass, no vegetation. Why? He says they're iniquities, backsliding. They've sinned. They love to wander, not restrain their feet. God does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. He says, don't even pray for the welfare of these That's people. Something else. I will not hear their cry. And he says, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword, the famine, and the pestilence. This is the signature of judgment. Amen. And continuing on with the lying prophets in verse 13. Then he said, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say to them, You shall not see the sword, nor shall you have famine. But I will give you assured peace in this place. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I didn't send them, nor did I command them to speak. They are prophesying to you a lying vision, worthless divination, and the deceit of their own minds. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Concerning the prophets who are prophesying in my name, although I didn't send them, and who say, Sword and famine shall not come upon this land. And wow, check this out. By sword and famine, those prophets shall be consumed. And the people who they prophesy shall be, to whom they prophesy, shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. Victims of famine and sword, with none to bury them their wives, their sons, and their daughters, for I will pour out their evil upon them. Wow, didn't they read verse 12? He says that uh, they go through the motions, they got the burnt offerings, they got the grain offerings, they're doing the right things, but, he says, <laughs> I will not accept them. In the name of the Lord. That's no right. And he says, I will consume them. By how? By the sword, by famine, and pestilence. Who are these prophets that would say and defy God's word? Wow, you know, that's a really good question, Brother Jeff. Who are the prophets who are saying, no sword shall come upon you and no famine? Who is that today? Today it's everywhere. It's the mainstream Christianity, I'm afraid. Mm. They say that if you live right, you'll prosper. If mm. They say if you live right, you'll escape the sword. You'll escape the famine. Sure enough, and you've got the whole prosperity movement that's saying this. No sword shall come upon you. No famine shall come upon you. But just a assured peace, as Jeremiah says. And what about the, these folks who uh, believe in this pre-tribulation rapture? Are they saying that, that no sword and no famine will come upon God's people? Well, it says here, he says that these prophets will be consumed. The ones that speak this are targeted by God and, and the people to whom they prophesy. So if you're believing this madness, hmm. you're a target too. Wow, you know, that is just really amazing words. And so all of these folks who are doing this prosperity movement and doing this pre-tribulation rapture, uh, not only do the lying prophets get the sword and famine, but those who listen to them. And I love the words here that God says. He says, a lying vision, a worthless divination, a deceit of their own minds. And they're doing this uh, in, in God's name. That's right. They just make it up as they go along. They don't need to read verse 12. They don't, they, they don't understand that this is the people that have iniquities, that sinned. He says, I don't want to hear them. I don't want to hear their cry. So, uh, you know, these are the people that uh, they believe what they want to believe and not God. Mm, ears tickled, yes. And so uh, for all you folks that are doing this prosperity movement and all you folks who are doing this pre-tribulation rapture and all you folks who don't think that the seals are coming, God says that not only are those who are prophesying these lies to you are going to get the sword and famine, but those who listen to these lies are also going to get consumed by the sword and the famine. Amen. Let's take a look at Jeremiah 15. 
Then the Lord said to me, through Moses, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my heart would not turn toward these people. Send them out of my sight, and I will and let them go. And when they ask you, Where shall I go? You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, Those who are for pestilence to pestilence, and those who are for the sword to the sword, and those who are for, uh, for famine to famine, and those who are for captivity to captivity. I will appoint over them four kinds of destroyers, declares the Lord, the sword to kill, the dogs to tear, and the birds of the air, and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because your hand was upon me, for you have filled me with indignation. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. Wow, so here we go again. Another chapter containing God's four disastrous acts of judgment. And this is very interesting because starting in verse 16, he starts to talking about, uh, Jeremiah starts talking about his words and how he ate them and how his words became a joy uh, and a delight. Uh, Jeremiah in verse 17 was filled with indignation. The hand of the Lord was on him. And then in verse 19, God says, if you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. Now, this seems to be really similar language to what we see in, in Revelation 10, uh, which is taken from Ezekiel 2 and 3, where God basically tells Ezekiel and, uh, and John in Revelation 10, eat the scroll and speak his words. That's right, Chris. And it says, and they, the words that were found and I ate them were a joy and a delight of my heart. Yeah, and that seems to be very similar to, to what Ezekiel 2 and 3 and Revelation 10 were saying because the words were sweet to them. Now, how could this possibly be bitter, bitter in the stomach, as, the, as Ezekiel 3 and Revelation 10 says? Well, it's talking to a people that's prepared for the sword, the famine, captivity, the beast, the four destructions of God, and they don't want to hear it, Chris. Yeah, amen. Boy, you know, the, the lying prophets, those in the prosperity movement, those with the Jezebel influence, those doing the pre-tribulation rapture, this is not going to be an easy message to take God's words to these people. And he says here, to utter what is precious and not what is worthless. So, you know, <laughs> stick to the script, man. Amen. What, what better thing could we bring or could just people in general bring to, to God's people than just simply his words? That's right. Stick with, the, stick with his words, Chris. Continuing with Leviticus chapter 26, he says, I will send the wild beast among you, which shall rob you of your children, destroy your livestock, and make you few in number. And I will bring a sword against you, that I will execute the vengeance of the covenant. When you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of your enemy. When I have cut off your supply of bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall bring back your bread by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. There it is, Chris. Wild beasts, sword, pestilence, and weight by bread. These are the four disasters, acts of judgment. And he says, why? The vengeance of the covenant. Now, Brother Jeff, what does that mean, the vengeance of the covenant? It goes right back to the Song of Moses, Chris. It's the blessings and the curses. And so you get the blessings if you're... If you're obedient to the covenant and you get the curses or the four disasters, acts of judgment, if you don't obey it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, Brother Jeff, we've gone through all of this language in the Bible where God talks about these four disastrous acts of judgment. So when we read the fourth seal, and we see God's four disastrous acts of judgment, sword, famine, uh, wild beast, and pestilence. When we read Jesus' words, uh, sword, nation against nation, famines, pestilence, beginning of sorrows, what are we to, what are, how, how are we to process all of this information? 
Well, I think it goes back to Deuteronomy 28. It gives you the blessings and the curses. And the Song of Moses that follows that lays out all the things that happen with disobedience. Mm -hmm. It's got the language of Revelation amplified with the seals, the trumpets, the bowls. It's all there, all within the Song of Moses. And the curses are for disobedience. It begins the beginning of sorrows and ends with the bowls of wrath. This language is just amplified again in Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And so really, no matter whether you're out in history, whether you're listening to Moses tell Deuteronomy or you're listening to Daniel speak about the exile in Babylon or you're in the end times escaping the the image of the beast, no matter where you are, if you're disobedient, then the four disasters, acts of judgments are coming your way. Amen.